Alright, every now and then I find myself typing in <laughs> The Last of Us Part 2 on YouTube to see if they like release anything new for the upcoming uh, release and of course they have thankfully for me and it's uh, I think it's gameplay so we're gonna watch that so without further ado my name is Mars and let's <laughs> dive on into this under here all right inside the gameplay already has a considerable amount of dislikes but <laughs> let's see come on under here what the gameplay needs to do is immerse you in the world give you as many interesting actions to survive in this world and overcome obstacles and obstacles could be infected it could be that's interesting people, they could grab you and like pull you and water. then try to Anything attack you happen in this post-apocalyptic that's world. that's interesting for an infected but more than anything, it needs to put you in Ellie's shoes. That you're experiencing what Ellie's experiencing, making you feel what she feels. Because the more we do that, the more the emotional beats of the story work for us. And the more they work for us in this very unique way that only works in video games. The gameplay philosophy of The Last of Us Part Two is putting you I want that in the shoes of Ellie. <laughs> Everything that that means, it means giving you a threat constantly as this world has it means giving you the hard choices because this game takes place in such a hostile universe and our characters are pushed to do really difficult things we want to put you in alignment with those choices we want you to understand how hard certain decisions were for these characters because they're hard for you i would say the overarching philosophy of how we approached designing the game mechanically is how can we take things to the next, next level. Everything kind of comes out of the story. And how do we do it through systems? So one is you have to feel the pressure of survival survive by the skin of my teeth? How do I use all these, all the scrap around me? Any kind of bullet, any AKA kind of AKA that means it's gonna be way harder than the first one. I'm not sure when they recorded this, story. but Neo looks like, like the, the bad um, negative feedback that was, was received from the leaks Ellie and whatnot. Kind of took a toll on him. Nimble. Compared to the other interviews, anyway, probably just me. I don't know. Like you're not the strongest person in the room, but you still should be able to rise to the challenge and survive. Survive, you know, a fight with a bunch of people that are all bigger than you. So therefore, it meant creating a character and systems and mechanics that allow you to be much more nimble. And that's where we added um, a jump button. Deal. In the first game, we had a clamor button, but not really jumping. And here, Ellie can jump. The combat scenarios are much more vertical, where Ellie can use elevation to her advantage. Prone is a huge, huge one. Prone, obviously, it means to lay flat on the ground. Uh, something so simple. Again, something that in real life you'd be able to do. Letting the player have access to all their weapons, all the items, crafting, everything, while in that position and it just creates so many more emergent uh, things in gameplay. Now that we have this other state that the player could be in which they're very low to the ground, how else can we use this other than just hiding in vegetation? We're like, well, there's a lot of man-made things or different structures that have collapsed that allow just enough space for you to crawl under, which means that now as enemies are looking for you, you can crawl under things and hide and it's just one more way to assess your environment and use it to Ellie's advantage. Now, because you can hide under things, we gave the enemies, we made them smarter and gave them the ability to look under things. So while you might hide somewhere and be safe for a while, eventually they're gonna start looking under stuff. And if you're hiding under a truck and they spot you, they're gonna yank you out and then try to kill you. Dodging is a big one because now with dodge, anytime you're in a you're in a, a scuffle, you have a chance to get away. 
you have a chance to counterattack. It lets escape be an option as well. Sometimes you just gotta run. And that is another part of this world, which is sometimes the threat is so overpowering that you just have to get away. When you are partially hidden, or you're like you're in grass, that means people from afar can't see you, but people from closer can kind of see you. They will eventually acquire you. You're not completely hidden when you're in grass. She went into the grass. Watch yourself. And it makes you as a player become much more aware of your surroundings. Jump, prone, dodge, you know, all these things feed into both exploration and uh, combat because it lets us expand the space. The size of spaces can be bigger. The intricacy of spaces can be more complex. And it still works exactly as you would expect. So when it came to our level design, we really wanted to challenge ourselves to make a world that really felt like a real space as much as we possibly could and didn't feel like a series of combat encounters and exploration spaces and then combat encounters that felt like a, a hall of horrors or something, um, but something that really felt like a space that you could explore that seemed like a legitimate uh, urban environment. And that pushed us to make our level design uh, even more open than it was in the first game, which for us at the time was, uh, was pretty open. In this game, we've gone so far in making the level design open uh, that there are actually entire story moments, entire combat encounters, like full scripted sequences that you may completely miss. And there are things that we feel like, even though the portion of our player base may never see these things, uh, the fact that when you do encounter them, you feel like you discovered them, it lends them this charm and this magic that I think is unique to games that, you know, this, this happened to me because of what I did and what the place I explored to. Crafting is very much about a payoff to exploration, meaning that when you enter new spaces, you want to look around for supplies. You want to open drawers and cabinets um, and look for different things that will allow you to craft either items that can help you heal, items that can help you attack multiple enemies at once, such as the Molotov um, or the landmine that Ellie can craft, items that can help augment your weapons, like a silencer for her pistol. My old god, um, of course, wanted to mess up, but I, um, so far they haven't, I feel like they didn't, like, mentioning this similar stuff before, so I was not, like, too surprising at this point, but they use, they're showing a little bit of new little footage and whatnot, so I am I am still hyped for this game, but I am so terrified because all they they keep mentioning like being survival and like really like being like much stronger emphasis on the importance of the choices you make in the long term for your character. Useful. They're making it more like real life feeling, so very more survival. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a very hard game. Like even worse than the first one. I remember the first one when you had to do like the little generator thing where you got separated with Ellie, um, and you like fell because of the elevator. That part, like the first time you play that, that was like completely hard, and that's that's gonna be this whole game. <laughs> that's gonna be this whole game. But I am greater kinship with happy Ellie because you are living with decisions that you've already made. Like Kinda. You are continuing this through line of her journey through this world uh, and the moment to moment gameplay is influenced by that in a way that we haven't before. The realization that your choices have these long term consequences is very much like the nature of the, the narrative of the game. Uh, and I'm happy that the mechanics are supporting that. Now, I don't know if I'm even going to post this or not. They didn't really sell like too much like new stuff or new information or anything about the game, so I don't know, but even though people are very like like uh they're very in between about getting this game, I know for a fact that I'm still going to experience it on my own. So I'm still going to buy the game. I still cannot wait for the release date, which is now June the 19th. So we have less than a month left. But I don't know. I really hope like whatever character 
like if they do in fact kill Joe or whatever that it has some it has a like a I want to say a benefit but it's not just to kill him just because everybody likes him and it'll be be more suspenseful but I don't know I just want it I don't want it to be just for fun to make it seem like it's interesting or kind of like a surprise like how they usually deal with killing off like main characters that you know in different shows and movies and everything else but I don't know um they have been making I remember there was a little video that Troy did and he's pretty much saying you know buy the game like the game can be spoiled by the little leaks and um, screenshots that apparently was released for this game and whatnot. And I think at this point they're probably just saving face to make you still buy the game to give you hope that whoever that they think is dead or is going to die doesn't die. But then you play the game and it's and it's <laughs> really really what happens. I think they're just saving face right now because the leaks probably are all true. Whatever the other part of the leaks are other than Joe I'm assuming Joe is one of the main leaks but I don't know I'm not gonna look it up I'm not <laughs> I'm still staying away from that side of the internet but I am oh that was one thing I wanted to mention on Neil's Twitter they they announced that um, Ellie and Joel or the last of us is gonna be a series adaption and I hate when they do like 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 video game into movie like transitions and stuff like that like with Resident Evil like the movies started to get horrible which led to the game starting to get horrible then it like rebooted and then it had Resident Evil 7 then it started to do with remakes and it kind of built the Resident Evil franchise back up but the the game that the game the uh the movies put it on a negative path so I don't really care for movie adaptions when it comes to certain things especially video games so I don't or I don't know I don't I'm not looking forward to the series adaption but we're gonna see and of course people are gonna be picky about who plays Ellie and Joel and <sighs> don't ruin this and because of their because of them doing a series adaption I'm assuming there won't be a last of us part three video game so that's probably part two is probably gonna be it for that so I don't know but I'm really curious to see what happens with Abby and Dina I didn't know that Abby was her name I believe Abby was the female in one of the trailers who was being hanged Dodging is a big one. so I don't know I'm really curious to see how everything like plays out and what how it fits in a story but I don't know we will see we will definitely see and I will be playing this on my channel Sometimes you just gotta run. <laughs> hopefully I'll see you then <laughs> have a good one I almost forgot before we go Let's look at the negative comments below. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Here's one, the last of Downgrades 2. <laughs> Downgrave. Interesting. Um, here's one. Somehow I feel uncomfortable watching this. It has the same energy as the presentation of No Man's Sky. I mean, you could feel that they're being false with what they say. Hmm. Let me look at the other comments under this one. Can't wait to can't wait and see on what's false in this video. <laughs> Many elements had already been known. Yeah, they didn't even show the main character. Uh one of the protagonists almost well, I'm just saying everyone hates him or her. Hasn't been shown probably as to not disappoint people. One of the main protagonists everyone hates is that Abby or is it Dina was there leaks with Dina too leaks about Dina doing probably I don't know all right let's see what else um <laughs> I can't wait for the reviews pointing out the false advertisement 
Um, what else? What else? Let's let's keep it going. Very okay. Very many many employees feel burnt out and unhealthy with plans to quit after The Last of Us Part Two ships. Oh shit! Is that true? Who really knows at this point? I feel so bad for the people that worked on the programming of the game. From the gameplay point of view, it looks amazing, but Drunkman and the new writing staff may have screwed the story. I am very excited to play this. I have distanced myself from the story controversy, so I'm going in blind. Yes, I, yep, yep, that's how I'm trying to do it. I shouldn't be reading the comments, but <laughs> I s we'll remember these comments for when we're playing to see if they're true or not. Or debunk them. Hey, what is this? The way they are wording this really is misleading. Are they not happy with the game or what they s or what they sound so sad? See? That's what I said about drunk men or drunk men as they have made a huge mistake or something. Uh, finally the gameplay trailer. I'm excited for this game. I'm still not going to buy this game. Buy this game, damn <laughs> Honestly, this is the only game that looks truly impressive this year. I can't wait. I agree with that too. I'm, I'm not, I don't really know all the other. I know there is that Ghost of Tsushima. There's Cyberpunk that's later in the year. There's supposed to be that Avengers game. Like, I don't, they do look good, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna play Cyberpunk. And I don't, I don't know. Other games this year don't seem all that interesting to me right now. Aside from this, I'm still gonna play it. We've been working on this game for five plus years, and everyone's saying the gameplay looks too good to be true. Five plus years is a long time, and I know this game, this gameplay is gonna be amazing. I really, what? I really hope this bombs. Why would you hope that? Then you are not. A Last of Us fan, just like your life. <laughs> the way they talk is not very enthusiastic. They seem worried. Yeah, they all did seem kind of, kind of down. I feel like the games will ruin me this year. Yeah. It's so bad. Can't wait to see their flip. What? 